going on YouTube folks out there, Facebook friends, people of Black Junction TV. My name is Ademir and this is the Hard Black Truth. And the Hard Black Truth is that the Democrats are desperate and are cowards. And I'll get into telling you exactly why it is I feel that way. Uh, because today was day one of the Democratic National Convention. They're doing it virtually. No more large stadiums, large audiences. You know, COVID got a lot of things on lock. And they're trying to show that they are the safest of people. They are the safer choice for the American people. It's all become about COVID and COVID, COVID, COVID. And they are currently in the process of trying to convince uh, black people. I would say the, the, the greater... American people, but specifically black folks. And make no mistake about this, guys. Everything that they say in favor of these two folks, uh, they're speaking it heavily to black people. They so desperately need black people. It, they know that if they have black people energized and ready to go out and vote, for Biden and Kamala Harris, they know that there's no chance that Trump can get reelected. But therein lies the problem. You gave us eight years, and that is the worst thing that the Democratic Party could have done. You gave us eight years of, of, of nothing for black folks. This guy, Obama, came in talking about change you can believe in. And we just ate that up. And we thought that there was some sort of Morse code. And there were folks out there, um, many of whom I ignored at the time. There was folks out there letting us know that, you know, hey, look, this isn't it. This isn't your guy. He's come out telling you plain as day that he's going to be doing a lot of things for LGBTQ. And when it comes to you, all he's telling you is change you can believe in. And we were out there like, hey, man, nah, he can't come out and just say it like that. You got to get in office first, man. You know, let him get in office first. And he's telling you it's change you can believe in. And I hearken back to when he was elected and there was that young black lady that Fox News played the hell out of. And she was sitting there crying tears of joy, telling herself, I don't have to go to work. I don't have to pay my bills. And I was just sitting there. I remember thinking to myself, like, damn, lady, you laying it on a little thick. And, you know, you know, perhaps we will get something. That's what I was really thinking. Hell, I voted for the man. I'm like, we're going to get something. But I think you laying it on a little thick, lady. You know, we were all, it was crazy because during his presidency, many black folks was just like, yo, we just got to sit Ali by and be patient and wait. You know what I'm saying? When he when he's ready, he'll let us know to stand up and we'd be ready for him. And that never happened, right? And every time Obama would come out and get a little bit buck, remember when his buddy Henry Fr uh, Gates Jr. got arrested for um, disorderly conduct, basically? The, the police came out and were questioning him up because he had uh, lost his keys. I think he stayed on campus and he had to get inside of his uh, his uh, dormitory, his, his his home, and he got in his home finally. And he was upset by the police presence, presence, and he showed out just a little bit, stepped back out on his porch, and that police officer said, "Man, fuck you! You just did exactly what I needed for me to exercise my authority over your black ass. Come along with me, you come to jail." And Obama got buck. He was like, "Man, the police acted stupidly," and it was crazy. He received so much of a heavy backlash from the right wing media and many. Many black people, they had no shortage of coons and coonettes. I still remember that one black police. I'm talking about, I, I voted for him and never again. And talk about the police acting stupidly. And what did he end up doing? He had them all sit down and have a bear. You had one man who locked up another man. One man who shackled another man. Simply for speaking his mind. That's, that's crazy shit to think about. That that white officer exercised his authority much in the same way that they did back during the days of old right those slavery days 
Or even when you had those papers please days when you was a black free uh, uh, person, but you had to have your papers. And if you didn't have your papers, hey, that white officer ain't had no problem locking your black ass up because you didn't have any rights. You weren't even considered a human being. And that officer did the same thing to Henry Skip Gates Jr. This isn't me trying to tie up his name and say, and say like he's some great leader of black society. Nah, but the fact of the matter is that that took place. It happened. And what did Obama do? They had a beer summit. Jesus Christ, Lord have mercy, people. They sat down and drank beer. Nothing happened. That was it. We had several police shootings and Obama would come out and directly address black people. And what would he say? When he came time for him to speak directly to us, you guys need to pull up your pants and get a job and stop killing each other and stop doing... Like, the only thing you had to tell us was, was chastise us? The entire eight years of his presidency, not one police officer was convicted. They trotted out Eric Holder. We have these black people. In, like all of a sudden, black faces started popping up in positions of authority all over the nation. Even the Republican National uh, uh, Party, they had Michael Steele that they put in office just random out the way. Just had this big goofy Negro they, they just propped up out of the way. Black folks were all over the place with Obama, and nothing happened. How about that? See, it was easy to get us caught up into voting for him in the first place because, again, he talked about change we could believe in, and he didn't have a history. But with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, we know that they have no problem implementing uh, new laws and, and introducing new legislation that they know will have a negative adverse effect on black people. They like the three strikes law. I just got done doing a whole video on how the three strikes law was used to convict a woman for life when they caught her with weed. They caught her with weed. They caught this woman with marijuana in her car and they gave her a life sentence and she attempted to appeal it during the Obama years. And, and she's still in prison to this day, folks. She is still in prison to this day. That's, that's the legislation put out there by Joe Biden right there. And Kamala Harris is a prosecuting a, attorney or whatever. You think she was doing anything in favor of your black ass? Hell to the no. This woman has been sponsored by the police unions. They know that she is friendly towards them. Yet they're going to sit there and trot out your Bernie Sanders, who's an independent, by the way. He's not even a Democrat. Bernie Sanders, who when asked about reparations long ago, like two election cycles ago, he told you it would be too controversial. This same Bernie Sanders and the rest of the um, uh, uh, Democratic Party would have you believe that we can, as a great nation, join hand in hand and sing Kumbaya. But when it comes time to talk about reparations, we can't do that because you might ex uh, upset a certain segment of this population and it'll be too controversial. Hell, the same people that voted this man into office. They even have Michelle Obama basically out there talking about how difficult the job was and how this uh, uh, doesn't really change you being in that position of power. It just shows more of who you are. And that's interesting because with your husband, we got a lot of LGBTQ items passed. Nothing for black people. So I guess that really showed who he was at the end of the day. Nah, people. You're not going to be able to convince me that this man is just so bad and that my quality of life has changed so badly that I need to vote against him. Not necessarily vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I just need to vote against Donald Trump. No, you're not going to convince me of that. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to play that hand. As a matter of fact, I'm going to mind my business. And if you want my vote, you need to be offering tangible benefits specifically for my black ass. That's what needs to happen. And if you can't do that, don't expect my vote. And this is just how we need to be educating these politicians moving forward. They need to understand that if they want the black vote and if they want to succeed, they're going to have to be willing to take some L's every now and then as they introduce new legislation, new policies that specifically benefit us. Yeah, you're going to get pushback from that other side of society. 
Yeah, they're going to put this man in office and they're going to seek to put others in office that carry his ideology. But you're going to have to be willing to take those L's. And I promise you, to those who actually bring forth the first and, and last sets of tangibles that black folks have been demanding this whole time, it will be them who will have our undeniable allegiance until they mess that up. But you got to be willing to take some L's. If you're not willing to take those L's, understand that after Trump, someone else will come along with an R in front of his name. And guess what? That person's going to mess around and get reelected again. You're not going to be able to reintroduce any more of these Cory Bookers and Kamala Harris's. You may try to catch us with another uh, 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 agent, right? Some out of the blue person who hasn't been maligned as much, who doesn't have much of a history to draw upon us. But guess what? We ain't trying to hear it anymore. We're not trying to hear nice little platitudes. We're not trying to hear change you can believe in. We want to hear specific tangibles. And then we want to see those things take place because if we put you in office and you do not perform, we'll make sure that you get up out office. It's our time now, period. You guys let me know how you feel about this. My name is Otomer. Holla at me. Peace. Mm -hmm.